Should you do yoga if you're a two-year-old? Oh. Excellent idea. Should you do yoga if you're an 82-year-old? What she's doing is called peacock pose. Should you do yoga if you're a woman? Um, yes. Should you do yoga if you're a man? Damn straight. Should you do yoga as a supplement to other sports, other forms of exercises and activities that you enjoy? 100%. Yoga helps prevent injury. Yoga helps work all those funny little muscles that you don't even know you have. And yoga works to develop symmetry in your body and bring about balance. How's it going? This is Luke from Power Tribe Yoga. It's the first time I've done a vlog of any kind. It's a very strange experience. Somehow having this guitar on my lap makes me feel a little bit less awkward, I'm gonna be honest. So, since I started posting these videos online, a lot of people have kind of reached out and asked me why am I doing this, um, how did I get into yoga, when did I get into yoga, why did I get into yoga, so I thought I'd do this little video and just provide a little bit of context as to how I got into yoga and how you can get into yoga. I think I was 23 at the time. I'd been in and out of gyms for about five, six years, very much into the whole weightlifting culture, trying to bulk up, trying to get big. But let's be honest, I'm a skinny ass dude. I put on muscle and as soon as I stop exercising, I would just lose it immediately and go back to my usual normal skinny self. It wasn't sustainable. I was attempting to do these three month long weight training programs. Inevitably, I'd always get injured at some point and kind of break the flow of the exercise program and lose whatever gains I'd managed to make. So I was traveling at the time, I was living on the tip of this island in Panama, very rustic, very rural. There was like no one around, certainly no gyms or anything like that. And this island was filmed with these coconut trees with all these massive coconuts and I had this whole P90X workout series with Tony Horton I'm sure a bunch of you know who he is this crazy guy favorite dude super funny um, and I was taking these coconuts you know before they were ripe and ready to eat when they were still quite heavy heavy-ish and I was putting them in plastic packets and using them for arm curls and shoulder press it was really quite silly certainly not nearly as much weight as I was used to at the time I got very into the yoga video that was part of the series. It was this hour and a half long class. I'd never done yoga before. I'd never been into a yoga studio before. I had no real idea what I was getting myself into. Little did I know at the time that yoga was this whole big system of ideas and philosophies and beliefs, which I only learned later on and which I'll definitely speak about in other videos at some point. But at the time, all I was looking for was a way to keep fit and exercise while traveling and it was extremely challenging and it was extremely uncomfortable. I'd never put my body into these funny shapes before. I was very inflexible. I didn't have a particularly good control over my own body weight, but therein lay the challenge. I remember I'd started getting tattoos and you know, tattoos can be very addictive and once you get one, you're immediately thinking about the next one. And for a while, I wanted to get a massive tattoo of a spider, somewhere very visible on my body, on my neck, on my arm, somewhere where I'd be forced to see it. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I'm terrified of spiders and I always have been. Maybe if I force myself to look at a spider, even if it's not real, every day I'll slowly lessen my discomfort towards spiders. And something about that stuck with regard to yoga too. Some part of my body knew that the discomfort that yoga put me through was necessary. It was a necessary step towards moving forward and towards growing. I read a book recently that spoke about three different stages of stress. Even that word stress is used extremely negatively, but stage one stress is normal stress. The kind of conditions that your mind and your body has to be put through in order to overcome, to learn and to grow and to change. One of the things that I find very amusing about having done yoga for a while is when you speak to people, they'll speak to you as if you were made for yoga. You have a flexible body, you have the focus and concentration that is required to spend time in these poses. But the irony, specifically for me, is that it's the exact opposite. I think I very much needed yoga to develop my flexibility. I needed yoga to develop my focus and concentration because naturally I don't really have those things. And so when I came to yoga, I was extremely inflexible. And I know that that's a problem point for a lot of people who want to start. It's just uncomfortable. There's so much discomfort involved 
in putting your body into weird shapes and poses that it's never been in before. What's been so exciting for me about yoga is the way in which you build different skills. It's like many other sports or pursuits where a number of little skills need to be mastered before they can be put together to reveal some more important whole. And it's not like mathematics. By understanding A, that doesn't mean you automatically can move to B, and then if you understand B, you can move to C. That's not the case at all. It was the first time I was consciously aware of how by building all these slightly different skills, at some point they'd congeal and something fantastic would happen and I'd find myself expressing a pose that I hadn't been able to express before. And there was kind of a rush in that. It's almost gamified in a way. It's like building a puzzle. You're, you're putting together all these disparate little pieces and then one day you find the connecting point and everything kind of clicks and you get a much bigger picture. So that's kind of how I got into yoga and why I got into yoga. But the more important question to answer, I think, is why I've stayed with yoga. One of the things that yoga has taught me is to be patient because I'm a naturally very impatient person. I'm fiery, I'm product driven. These are things I'm working to change and these are things that yoga has helped me with in large part. My body was not conditioned as a kid to be flexible and to be strong. I was not much of a sportsman. I spent my afternoons skateboarding in the street with friends, just messing around. And so the process of developing through yoga has been extremely slow. And that's one of the things that the body will force you into realizing if you stick with it, is that change is slow and process is slow. But inherent in that understanding is that what is more important than the final expression of any pose or being able to stand in your head or do a handstand is the process itself. Slowly observing and working kind of day to day with no real expectation or attachment to where this is gonna lead you, to what final thing this is gonna give you, but dedicating yourself to the practice itself. And that's been extremely beneficial to me. And that's why I return to yoga, you know, five, six, sometimes seven days a week, because I've learned that it's the habit itself that's important. So how do you get into yoga? Very easy. All you need is a yoga mat and your body. There's a proliferation of yoga teachers who've all gone online now and are offering their services. Most of them are charging. Guess what? All my yoga videos are free. Um... Don't overthink it. People ask, you know, can you start doing yoga just from watching online videos? The goal of yoga, at least in the beginning, is to learn how to synchronize your body and your movement and your breath and to do yoga in such a way that allows you to feel into the experience of how you're moving and how your body feels. That's extremely important. You don't need very much for that. How often do you have to do yoga? How many times per week? When I started doing yoga, I was doing this hour and a half long class once a week and it was extremely challenging and that was more than enough for me and I didn't need any more. But over the years, over time, I started practicing yoga more and more, honestly, because my body got more used to what I was doing and it just made me feel good. So if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to share a comment, uh, like it, uh, subscribe on YouTube and follow on Facebook and Instagram for more content yoga related and anything that has to do with health and wellness and mindfulness and all that cool stuff that is sure to follow. Thank you.